the contradictions themselves. As the name suggests, velocity curve, it's all about uh, the speed of planets and the speed of the stars. Uh, we have already seen that farther the mass, weaker is the influence. So when they try to find the speeds of all these planets, as you go away from the center of the sun, the speeds were reducing. Uh, this is what is called as velocity curve. The speed is reducing as you move away from the sun. So the scientists wanted to see if it holds good uh, the same in galaxy also because gravity affects all masses in the same uh, way. And they were expecting that the gravity would be weak, influence would be reducing and hence the speed also would be reducing as you move away from the central supermassive uh, black hole. But what they found was exactly opposite. Instead of the speeds reducing as you go away from the black hole, the speed of the stars was increasing. Let me put it this way. You have uh, the central massive mass. When you consider these smaller planets in the solar system, it is planets. When you come to the galaxy, these are stars. When we see in solar system, because of the influence which, which is weakening, when the first planet travels 90 degree, the rest fall back, which is understandable. But when you come to galaxy, you see when the first one is crossing 90 degree, traversing 90 degree, the second and the third start also uh, traversing the same uh, uh, angle. This would suggest that third star is traveling faster than the second star, second star is traveling faster than the first star, which means stars are traveling at higher speeds as you go away from the center of the galaxy. Let me put an analogy. Copy paste this structure on a dinner plate. You have the center which is a supermassive black hole. You have these three dots which make uh, the stars turn the disk. It would exactly behave the same way as galaxy. But the galaxy is a very porous structure. The nearest star to Sun, which is Alpha Centauri, is 40 trillion kilometers away. That means between these two stars, it's absolute uh, space, no matter whatsoever. So what they thought was that galaxy, though you do not see a mass here, but there is a mass that is not seen which is affecting. There was no other force uh, for uh, available at that stage for clients. Uh, for scientists to suggest uh, why the stars are moving faster and hence they came up with this idea of dark matter. They poured in a matter uh, that was dark in the sense it is uh, cannot be detected, cannot be felt, cannot be measured and that is affecting the galaxy. So now they have fixed the galaxy as such which is now it is okay to say because there is more mass to the galaxy than is seen in the eye, the stars are traveling faster as you move away from the sun, uh, from center. But the contradiction does not end here. This is just a pictorial representation of the galaxy. Galaxy in fact has an inner ring of stars, densely packed, but they have got spiral arms also. When the scientists observed the speed of the stars in the spiral arms, it was neither following the increasing speed, nor was it dropping as was expected earlier. In fact, the speed remained constant. And if this has uh, missed your observation, our solar system is not affected by dark matter. And solar system is what galaxies are made of. Every star has got a planetary system. So when you are pouring this dark matter, it is, it is uh, applicable only to the stars per se, but not the planetary system inside. And this is what we call it as a, a selective application of dark matter in the galaxy. Why we consider this as a, a contradiction is because the gravity should, wherever it is applied, uh, whether it is solar system, a galaxy, different parts of galaxy, it should apply uniformly. If you are unable to apply it uniformly, like in the case of uh, planetary system or in the case of spiral arms, any compensation that we are suggesting, at least that should be uniform. And what we see is uh, that is not so. So the possibility that either the gravity does not exist or it does not work the way we think it works. First one was dark matter and velocity curve. 
The issue here was if at all gravity existed, it should have acted uniformly, but it does not. And if you want to compensate uh, that particular deviation with respect to by adding introducing another um, force like a dark matter, at least that should act uniformly and that also does not. So important for us to know now is does space city act uniformly? Is it able to explain all the anomalies? It will be able to explain. So let us first take the solar system. We will try and see the, how the play of forces S1, S2 and S3 are able to explain the velocity curve. And since we are talking only about velocity or the speed of the planets, the first pressure which is S1 which is a holding pressure, we will discount it because it does not affect speed. It is not adding any kinetic energy to it because it is acting on all the sides. So we will not talk about S1. But when you come to S2, which is basically the moving pressure, this is the principal force in solar system because of the higher mass of sun as compared to all the planets put together. And we had seen that principal force S2 is dependent on masses that it is acting on and the distance, inversely proportional to the distance. So as you move away from the center of the solar system, farther the mass, weaker is the influence. So hence S2 reduces. Now coming to S3, it has a minimal effect. Now S3 is directly proportional to the mass that is there in that particular orbit. orbit. This is showing when there are many masses going around, but in case of a planet's orbit, it could just be one mass going around it. So when you, this S3 would be very, very less as compared to S2 and you will come across these peaks when you move away from the uh, center of the solar system and the magnitude of this is directly proportional to the weight of the mass that you are experiencing. That is how velocity curve is explained by S1, S2, S3 and let us assume, uh, apply the same thing to, to a galaxy or our Milky Way. In, the, in, the, in, the, in this situation also, the holding pressure is something which we will not uh, talk about because again it is uh, holding pressure. There is no speed uh, imparted to the uh, stars. So since this is a complex system, let us study the mass distribution in the galaxy. We know for sure that the galaxy is made up of a supermassive black hole in the center. Then you have an inner ring wherein the stars are densely packed. And then you have spiral arms around it we, where the, the stars are sparsely concentrated. So let us study the uh, galaxy's mass distribution. So you have a supermassive black hole which weighs as much as a 40 million suns. And then you have an inner ring wherein the blue dots represent the stars in the inner ring and they are forming the inner ring and the grey dots are the ones which are forming the spiral arms. Now let us try and understand how this velocity curve is explained by spacity. Let us first take the inner ring. In the inner ring as you move away from the center of the galaxy as the radius increases you can see that the mass in that particular circumference or at that radius is increasing. And since S3 space force is a force that is acting along the direction of the motion of the masses also increases. And since S3 increases or the force increases, the speed of these stars also increases. That is how you have this graph which is increasing as you move away from the center of the galaxy. Now let us see what is happening to the spiral arm. You see the mass was increasing here in the inner ring but the masses, the cumulative masses of the stars in that particular radius as you move away from the center of the galaxy remains constant. Since the mass is remains co remaining constant, S3 which is directly proportional to the mass of the uh, masses which are making up the system the S3 also remains constant. That is how you see this S3 remaining constant. 
since S, sorry when S 3 remains constant the speed also remains constant that is the speed that we see here. The next is at the junction of the inner ring and the spiral arm these stars they are not falling back. Why would that reason be because there is a play of S 2 like we saw here S 3 there is a play of force of S 2 that means inner ring is acting as a primary mass and the stars in the spiral arm acting as secondary masses. So, as you move away from the center of the galaxy S 2 is directly proportional to the main mass and the smaller mass and inversely proportional to the distance and hence S 2 is also decreasing. Since S 2 is decreasing the speed is also decreasing and as you see if the effect of S 2 is decreasing and effect of S 3 is remaining constant this would in a way lead to these stars falling back that is how spiral arms form and why does this not drop it is because this star speed is almost the same speed of all the stars that are there on the perimeter because of the closest distance. So, the basic speed of all these stars in the spiral arm would be the speed of the stars on the edge of this perimeter. And then coming to the effect of the supermassive black hole, we see that it has a minimal effect because on one side you have primary mass which is 1 whereas the stars on the other side is 100,000. Even if you want to take only one sector it is 25,000 and even if you wish to consider this as a 40 million suns and one star only this one star on the other side is affected or acted upon by 25,000 ratio. So, 1 is to 25,000 and hence the effect of black hole as such on all the stars in the galaxy is minimal effect and that is why you will see that there would be S 2, but it would be very close to the x axis just parallel it would be reducing as you move away from the center, but it would be very less. So, as we saw here in explanation of S 1, S 2, S 3 did we come across anything called as dark matter? No, we did not have to resort to any dark matter and hence spacity is able to explain the contradiction that was there in the classical model of universe this way.